This video is going to go over the steps for how you can have your students make a copy of the template after you have created it in Google Sites. So you will go to sites.google.com slash new. You will create a Google site for whatever your vision is, whether that is in fact an eBinder, a digital portfolio, a, an interactive e-notebook, even a project that a team of students are going to work on. For our purposes, we are going to talk eBinder. And so this is an eBinder with Social Studies, Language Arts, and AVID because I teach all of these, and so I put it in one. A special note is if you do teach multiple contents and you want to create a large e-binder, one thing is, is if you have more than 50 pages, so these are all pages, it will not be able to make the copy as I'm going to show here. So that's very important to note. So if you know your content is going to be heavy and you want more than 50 pages, then you may consider doing a separate Google site for each subject. It will also take a little while for the Google site to copy the more content it has because that is the more memory that it has to copy over. Okay, so once you have your Google site complete and you are ready to push it out to students, as if you're going to the copy machine and giving them a copy of this website for them to also access and edit, you first need to publish your site. Your site uh, will not be published if it doesn't have this publish options. So best case scenario and best practice is to just publish every time you make a change. Site has been published successfully. You can view the site published on different previews here with a phone, tablet, or computer. And you can exit preview and continue editing. Okay, so what you do, there are two options to duplicate a Google site. One option is to go to the three dots and press duplicate site. So if you ever want to duplicate one of your websites, this is the great, a great option. It is not a great option for us to distribute all of these copies to students because what that would look like is you would give your students the editing link so they would have access to editing your Google site, and then you would direct them to not mess around with any of your pages, but to go ahead and go to the three dots and press duplicate site. It can be done, it has been done, but it can be very messy because what can happen is a, a student will press duplicate site and they will think that this is their site. And so they'll start editing your master copy. This is a great option if you want to manually duplicate the site for your students. Maybe you have students who need some extra assistance. So you duplicate the site and you add their name and then you share it with them. That's if they were not able to do it themselves, but you would need to do that for each child and then you would be the owner of their site. Um, so then you would have to change that as well. So it's not a best practice. It's not impossible, definitely not impossible to do, but there is a better way. So what that is, is it's a workaround through Google Drive. So what you need to do is you need to go outside of sites and you need to go to your Google Drive. So once you're in your Google Drive, you can see the items in your drive and you're going to need to create a folder. Title that folder something very clear for your students to see. You could even put the directions in the title would be a best practice. So I am going to title this folder eBinder template folder directions. Go to Google Sites, right to click, make a copy. I'm gonna to go to create. Now I'm going to go to this folder 
And this is what my students will see. So it's okay if you have quite a bit of text here. But now we want to drop that site into this folder. Okay, so stay with me because it's, it's some steps, but you only have to do it once and it's worth it. So you go back to your drive and you see this folder and you find your Google site. One option is to drag that site. Another option is to find your site and right click it. And you're gonna add shortcut, go to your drive, choose this folder and add shortcut. Okay, check that this has been done correctly. Beautiful. So now what you're going to do is you're going to actually share by pressing get share at link. And you need to make sure that the link is able to be opened by your students. So what you need to do is anyone with the link can view. Make sure you don't select edit. Copy the link, press done. You can now see with these two people a link sharing anyone with the view. Okay, so this is what you give your students. You don't give them the actual site, you give them the site in a folder for them to then right click and make a copy. So what's my next step? My next step is getting this link to my students. So you can go to the drop down and you can get shareable link, copy that link and give it to your students through your LMS. So we're gonna use Google Classroom as an example. Okay. I'm going to go to classwork. I'm going to create an assignment because this is something I want them to do. Okay. I'm going to add and you can add directly from your Google Drive. You could add that site, but really we're going to add this link because this is the correct way to get them to make the copy. Note that you may think, oh, I'll just make a copy for each student. If you try to do that, it's not going to work. So, because this is a Google Drive folder, it's not a Google document, it's not a Google Sheet, so you're gonna do students can view. You want to continuously tell yourself, am I giving them view rights or editing rights? All you want them to do is view view, view, view until they actually make the copy and then, and then it will be theirs to edit. So you can add instructions, go to this folder and find the file slash Google site, right click and select, make a copy. Be patient, it may take a few minutes. Once copied, check your Google Drive for the file. That will start with copy of Put your name in the title and edit away. Okay, so once you feel that you have directions, it might also be a good idea to actually add an instructional video through Loom or Screencastify or something like that to actually show them what to do. And then, you know, you can decide what you want to do. I always recommend doing a due date for assignments because then they see this in their task items. And then I have a topic called eBinder. So once I'm ready for my students to see this, I'm going to assign. Okay, and now we're gonna go and see this in the student view. I'm a student in this class, and I see due Friday is make a copy of your e-binder. So again, if you put the due date, it's right here. So I can go to this assignment, I can see the directions, and now I am going to select this, and it takes me right to that file. So again, this is view only. So as I open it up, you can see this is view only. I can't edit this. I have to actually go and make the copy. And this is a good thing because your students can't edit it either. 
So if I'm back here with the link my teacher gave me, I am going to now take this, I am going to right click, and I'm going to make a copy. You can see, oh, it created very fast. Sometimes that might not always happen. It might take some minutes. Um, and then show file location. If that goes away, which it just did, the file location is my drive. Go back to my drive, find the copy, open it. And now you can see that it has made a copy of everything that was in here. The title is changed to copy of. We should delete this and type a name. So we'll just type sample name there. And now it is the student's copy and they can work in here. To share it with you, they are going to need to select publish. They are going to need to give it a naming convention so you can teach them how to do that or show them this video. The web address, they can go ahead and maybe put their first initial last name and then something that is not going to be taken already. So maybe their um, school and maybe the year. Okay, as soon as they have this, they can select publish. To add you, the teacher, they can type your email in, just make sure they type it in correctly, um, and they can have you be an editor. The pro of this is that if they submit their eBinder but they forget to select publish, that you will always be able to see it, um, see their live edits, because remember if they make edits and they don't select publish, those live edits aren't going to show. The thing with sharing it with you as it was in the past before things like, you know, make a copy on Google Classroom and those types of things, it is going to be in your drive. So if you do not want that, then you do not have to pick this option to have them share it with you in this way. You just have to be very clear about them pressing publish, copying the publish site link, and giving it to you in some way. One idea is through a Google form for you to collect. They can also go to a specific assignment. So maybe you are checking chapter one. They can click this copy publish site link and you can see this specific link here is going to take you to this page. See how it starts with social studies? If they give you this link to home and, and copy that, then it will take you to home. Please pause, play, and repeat this video if your students have any issues with copying the site. You can try to support them with this video. And then again, a last effort is you can go to the three dots for those struggling students, duplicate the site, and um, share that with them and go through maybe how to change the owner settings. A final piece about publishing and having access to your students' sites is if you do not choose to have them share it with you, then you need to direct them to go to change. And they can change draft to their domain if this is an option. This is a school domain, so this will be secure within people within that domain. So the recommendation is that they have this so that you, in when you're working in that domain, can see this. If they're in a personal Gmail, that option will not appear. So if they do want to keep their sites not public, but still want you to be able to see it, then they are going to need to type in your name. A final note before pushing this out to students is just to make sure that your settings, your editing settings are off. When you go to your links, just triple check that this is view only. If you go here and you click your domain, you can now see that anyone with the link can edit. You likely do not want this. The only reason you might want this is if 
you do want them to manually go in with the three dots and make a copy. But if you do not want this, then you will choose restricted. And so that means that only people added can see you working in here until you press publish. And right now, as it stands, I have anyone on the internet can publish and find and open. If you have a domain again and you want to limit it to that domain, you can limit it and they will be a viewer. So no matter what best practice, you do not want all of these people to be able to edit your site. I hope this helped. It is the more complicated part of the Google Sites, but it is amazing that we can now create templates and have our students copy by simply putting it in a folder in Google Drive.